Hello and welcome to Linley Antique Me. I'm Elizabeth and I'm so excited today. I've never done one of these before, but I've seen people on here do vintage hauls or uh, unboxings, things like that. And I was given the opportunity to go through a box of patterns. Uh, a lady on my Buy Nothing group contacted me and said that she had a whole box full of vintage patterns and they range anywhere from the 1930s to the 1960s and I think maybe 170s and oh my goodness I was so excited that I just had to share with you and I thought what better way to do that than to try a vintage haul unboxing eh. you can call it whatever you want um but I'd love to share the patterns I have sorted through the patterns uh, and organize them so that I can do it a little faster for you uh, but otherwise they're pretty much untouched and I'm super excited to share with you Move my box closer, because it's epic. Ah. I'm so excited. So many patterns. All right, so when I first saw the box, um, I squealed internally. Um, my dear neighbor, April, the one that gave me the box, she and I squealed together over it, and we just kept squealing as we found um, each pattern. And she, thankfully, didn't think I was crazy every time I'm like, ah, oh, it's something new. Uh, anyway, beside the point, uh, there was these books to make doilies, crocheted and tatted, and I think that's pretty neat. There, let's see, where to start? Where to start? Let's start here with the little ones. Uh, there was a pattern, Amy Call's pattern, for uh, doll clothes which I think is super duper cute and my girls are gonna be so excited because you know I'm gonna make that. Next we have a baby pattern and oh my goodness, it's so adorable. I just love it. I love the little, I don't know, what what's this called? Like the sack? <laughs> I just think they're cute. They're really, really cute. Next up we have a transfer pattern cunning motifs for baby trousseau <laughs> and they're in there as well which is really fun you uh cut them out and iron them on which i think is pretty neat uh, i don't think this one has a date on it still kind of cool uh next up is another baby one with transfer it's for infants embroidery lay it i think it's so cute so much fun um, on to some bigger kid clothes. We have a really cute jumper. And then we have a teen, truly teen style by Simplicity. And uh, I'm small enough that I could probably wear some of these patterns, so I'm probably going to make this for myself. But look how cute that is. And this little piece I just realized here on her waist is removable. So you can have it both ways. Also, in the, the patterns for kids, there's this adorable coat. Another teen pattern, which you know I'm gonna be making for me, or someone. It's a two set, so it's a skirt and a shirt, and I think that's fantastic. We also have a nightgown, oh, from Sears, Roebuck, and Company, <laughs> which that's kind of fun. And then, oops, and then, this one's missing part of its pattern front, but you can kind of get the idea. It's kind of similar to the other one where it's a skirt and shirt. Oh, I think it's adorable and really cute. I love the pleats on this one. Last but not least in the kids section, we have um, some adorable boys jammies, which I'm pretty sure could probably go for boys or girls. I uh, just, ugh, look how cute that is. Just so cute. Look at him with his little teddy bear. Uh, okay, moving on. Also in this box of patterns, there were maternity patterns, which is so fun for me to see because I've always pondered what maternity looked like um, before we had our stretchy band pants and things like that. And this did not disappoint at all. We have a, what is this called? Um, it's a skirt with an open front. Uh, and so what you would wear it, how you'd wear it is with a long blouse. So you have the panel, so that you can either cover it or not cover it. And uh, it's great because you can wear it both in the daytime and long and formal, it says. So you can have both options. 
Uh, next up we have a maternity blouse, which I think is adorable. I love all the gatherings on the top. We have another maternity blouse, which is so much fun. These all belong to the same lady, uh, which is really neat because as you go through, I will find her name on certain things. And uh, there's even some personal effects in here that are of hers, and I'll get to those later. Uh, another smock. And last but not least, this adorable blouse. I'm digging this polka dots right here. Check that out. But yeah, I think these are so cute. I think I'm going to let my friend use these because she is young and married or getting ready to get married. And I also have another friend who is about to have a baby. And so, or not about to have a baby. She's pregnant. <laughs> and so I can't wait to see what they create with these because I am done having babies. I've had mine. Uh, let's see. Moving on. Oh, a fantastic men's shirt pattern, which I think is so cool. I'm digging that. Might have to make my husband a shirt. Uh, and then, let's see. It would seem, it would seem that our friend that owned these, her name was Susie, we'll call her Susie from now on, uh, was part of a pattern club. And so basically you could order patterns and they would send them to you. This one was from Country Gentleman and you would get them in a little packet and they would have different patterns like this blouse, for example. Excuse me, it's not a blouse, it's a dress. This dress and uh, this dress and all the pattern pieces were in here and you would order it to your size. So I think that's pretty neat. Uh, she had several of those. Uh, so that was one. She had this one from the Seattle Star. She had another one from the Seattle Times. Uh, Ann Adams patterns uh, also from Seattle Post. And it's kind of neat because it has her name on here and it tells what size she is, what pa uh, pattern size she needed. And uh, this one was really neat. It is uh, another pattern thing that she ordered and it has a bag full of appliques. So you can uh, embroider them onto your aprons or whatever you're working on. I think that's pretty fun. Let's see, uh, before we get into the big pile of patterns, I'll show you some of the kind of personal items which I found really neat. We have um, newspaper clippings that she has turned into pattern pieces. I haven't opened these up quite yet, uh, but this one says Dolman Sleeve Blouse. So I think that's pretty neat that she used the newspaper. And so you can actually read said newspaper. This one was for uh, uh, Klosh Pin Apron. Maybe that's not Klosh. Anyway, it's kind of neat because it has all of the different ads and what's playing in the movie theater. We have some more applique for your uh, aprons, which I love. And in case I ever need to take up bridge, we have horse cinch bridge. <laughs> uh, and it's kind of neat because she has her little notes in here on her bribable suits and what she won and sure tricks. And I think that's pretty cool. She's got that all wrote out. Also in here, we have a uh, W-2 from 1944. She worked for uh, the county courthouse in her local town, and she made that year a total wages of $596.13, which was, uh, for taxable, it was $62. And so I think that's kind of neat that in 1944, she was working in the townhouse. Um, let's see. Oh, this is kind of fun. Sewing machine cleaning how to from 1944 from the US Department of Agriculture. And it's got all the tips and tricks you need for cleaning your sewing machine, which I don't have one like this, but I still think that's fascinating. We have receipts from a building materials. It looks like she was getting someone groomed for $2. I don't see a date on that. Oh, 51, 1951. And then a dry cleaning from the 50s, and it's $21, no, $2.47. <laughs> uh, 
she got a shirt and two, a two suit set cleaned. We have our in remembrance thing. This one was really cool. It's a letter from a friend to her from 1946. And I might have to create a video just reading this to you. It's really cute. We have another bridge card and some more patterns on, uh, what's it called, newspaper, plus some tatting. Lots of tatting patterns, which I might just have to take up tatting because, you know, I have the whole beginner set here. Oh, and some crochet. All right, now on to the bulk of the patterns. These ones are anywhere from 1930 to 1940. I mean, excuse me, 1930 to 1960 with 170s, I think, in there. And they are fantastic. So I'm just going to kind of whip through them because this box is stuffed full of them. Um, I'll do it as quickly and painlessly as we can. <laughs> we have skirts and shirts. I think I might just show them to you and then if there's anything I particularly want to talk about, then I will. Nice circle skirt. Always a bonus. I love this one. Oops. I know for a fact all my seamstress ladies out there are freaking out by all these patterns, I'm quite sure, because I know I am. A little house coat. Look at the ruffles on that. It's so pretty. I can't wait to make some of these, for example. And I want to make this one for sure. Uh, this one's amazing because it's a uh, pencil skirt dress, but it has a removable overlayer. Pants and shirt with pockets. Yes. This one was a little different. Another peplum top I love. Uh, a jacket. This reminds me of uh, Mitch Measle very much that, or even Audrey Hepburn. Uh, set, a suit set. This one I can't wait to make. Check out the sash on that. So amazing. I love this one. This one's to die for. Ah, so amazing. More skirts. This one's kind of neat because it's just a box, basically. Like a big square. Another set. I'm loving the pleated skirts. I'm hoping to make a pleated skirt. I love the scallop on this one. This one I found really fascinating. It's not a dress, it's actually a blouse and a skirt. So you could make interchangeable pieces. Ah, stunning. Another skirt. Ah, it's another set, which I love. Skirt and blouse and jacket. Blousen. That's a fun word. Very Jackie-o here. Got a pencil skirt and jacket. And another one. I like the 
this one. We have another shepherd. This one's kind of neat. It's like a, a kimono style coat. I love this shirt. I've been thinking about making this one into like a coat, like a little short waist waistcoat. Another bathrobe. All right, next. Hope I'm not going too fast. If there any particular you want to see up close, uh, let me know, and uh, I can post pictures on my Instagram because uh, that would be fun. I love the drama on this one. Check out that side. All these suit patterns makes me want to try and make a suit one of these days. Maybe I'd actually get one that is nice and fitted. <laughs> this is really pretty. This is only four pieces. That's amazing. This is two pieces. I love this one. Shorts and a top. How cool is that? Any brides out there? Cause uh, I could wear this, that's beautiful. Check out that lace overlay, so amazing. Adorable tops. Oh, this is so fantastic. Look at that one. I love getting through. A lot of the older ones, which is fun. I love this one. Check that out. A halter with a bolero. How fun. A skirt pattern. Get the skirt. Oh, and blouse. Skirt and blouse. Another skirt. Look how amazing that is. So dramatic. Another one. I like this one. I like the illustrations on it. <laughs> Louse pattern, which is super adorable. I'm going to try and not drop it. Another dress. I really like it. It's kind of a jump. It's called attractive jumper and blouse pattern. I love the jumper. Jumper is fantastic. And this is kind of a neat little apron. Oh, excuse me, practical coverall, it says. Because <laughs> it's very practical. I love this dress. Some cover up. This one's beautiful. Country gentleman, oh, got two there. Country gentleman shirt waster. Blouse. Another blouse. I love the sleeves on this. Look at that. Another blouse. Lots of blouses. And then these are, I think, 60s, I want to say. I can't remember. I think I looked. Hmm. Oh, this one didn't say, but it's really cute.
This one said 64, a little capelet. This one's fun. Another pattern that was sent to her for a printed pocket, or printed pattern skirt, whatever. Back wrap skirt, that's what it's called. And then, these were a little newer, but still fun. This one says 77. Another maternity, but from the 70s. This is a cute, like, culotte slash skirt from 68. This is a fun little dress. I don't think the pattern's in here though. Oh yeah, it is. Uh, 66, I mean 67. And last one for patterns is this one. I thought I saw, it was 75, 1975. This says maternity. Sure change styles, huh? <laughs> The last thing I found was this really cool, it's called Feather, Feather Boning Strapless Foundation for Brassieres, Swimsuits, Strapless Gowns, and Sunsuits. Ready made bone lined for use in producing a secure and perfect fitting strapless garment, complete with hooks and eyes for back closure. Feather bone stays can be scissor cut and stitched through for necessary adjustments. Available in sizes 30, 32, 34, and 36. And uh, at first I thought it was a pattern, until I opened it up and realized it's actually the piece and it's still intact. It's still in one piece, which is pretty fantastic. The boning is in great shape. Um, it has the tag on the back that says strapless foundation boned with genuine feather bone, complete bone strapless bra in a size 36. And uh, here's the actual thing. Isn't that cool? That is, this to me is super fantastic and it's such great shape still. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it yet, but I think it's pretty neat. Um, yeah.